Okay, so I taught Oliver Reed uh, for Nicholas Rogue's film Castaway, and I spent maybe just under a month with him, nearly every day. And uh, I had the best time, but wow, he was a character. What are you talking about, Simon? You're talking to me, boy. <laughs> that was the kind of vibe all the time. So Oliver would play like practical jokes all the time and he was completely kind of wild. And as the day went on, he got more and more drunk. And uh, he'd sort of, he'd say things like this. Simon, you're going to have to stay here tonight because Pig has drank too much and he won't be able to drive you home. But you better not fuck my wife. I go, of course, I wouldn't dream of doing that. He says, well, don't you find her attractive? What's wrong with you, boy? I said, no, who's Pig? Oh, Pig, Pig's the driver. He's the working class. He's cool. I call him Pig. Can't take his drink, Kelly. Can't take it. But anyway, let's go to the cider shed. The cider shed? Yes. What is that? It's a shed where I keep my cider in barrels. And it's a hundred years old and there's mould floating in it. Oh, right. Okay. So one time, he had his little tiny terrier dog, I think it was, and it was grey and it was molting, and he grabbed it and pulled all this hair out of it and put it in a little plastic bank bag. I said to him, what on earth are you doing? And he said, you'll see, boy, you'll see. You'll see tomorrow. Oh, yes, I have a plan. And so the, the next day we are at um, Elstree Studios and he's having his hair bleached. Uh, not just on his head, all his hair. <laughs> and because it had to be bleached, because the part he was playing of Gerald in the film um, had red hair, so they bleach it first and then, no, no, no. Anyway, so I get there, because I'm meant to be with him all the time, teaching him bits of sleight of hand. So it's very early in the morning, and it's like six o'clock. He's already been in makeup an hour, you know, having his bleaching done. He's got his, his genitals in a plastic bag, you know, and they're... <laughs> it's really... He looked terrible in his... I said, oh, morning, boss, how are you? He goes, morning, Simon, you Jewish homosexual cunt. I go, well, that's not very nice. He says, so what? I don't care, boy, I don't care. I said, well, I, look, you know, I'm not really um, Jewish because my dad was Jewish. My mother wasn't Jewish. I'm an honorary Jew, I suppose. And I, uh, homosexual, I'm not sure. I tried it. It wasn't for me. Yes, haven't we all, boy, haven't we all? Didn't you see me with Batesy wrestling naked with our bollocks flying around? Well, at least his anyway. I mean, you know, I've only got a tiny little penis. You know, have you seen? I said, yes, yes, you've shown it to me six times already. And you've got it out in pubs and stood on the counter and waved it. Hi, I'm Molly Reed. Have you seen my cock? It's tiny. Yes, that's enough of that. All right, so anyway, I said, anyway, you're right. Shall I get you a cup of tea? Said, Only if it's a magic cup of tea, Simon. So, <laughs> and got him a cup, a mug, a coffee mug, a big coffee mug full of neat gin. Right, This is like 6.30 in the morning, something like that. And he drank, you know, drank all morning there. And he's, you know, he didn't have to act or be on set because he was having his hair dyed, you know, there, so. So, Oliver had been drinking all morning and uh, around lunchtime, just before we went for lunch, he um, he said, Simon, I've been drinking a lot all morning and I haven't had one slash. I went, no, you haven't. He said, right, I bet you I can fill up this highball glass seven times with my piss. And I go, really? I don't think you could do seven times. I think you could probably do three or four. But that's a lot of, that's seven, that's a three, four, three and a half pints, you know. I don't know. But uh, I'll bet you, all right. OK, 50 pounds. Yeah, 50 pounds, it's a deal. So he said, come with me, boy. Oh, you've got to witness the pissing. And we went to the gents, and he went against, uh, stood up at the urinal and started peeing into this glass. And I stood well back because he held his hand high, full of piss in this glass, and just poured right up high and poured it down in front of him into the urinal and shouts out, One! Like this. <laughs> and it all splashed all over his shoes. And I was going, Oh, fucking. Hell. So he, he carries on, he, he just carries on pissing into the glass, but he couldn't stop pissing in between. Um, so there was quite a lot of wasting, I think. So uh, he carried on. He got, he strained for the third glass, you know, and he couldn't get them all and so he went you bastard he said you won i said here's 50 pounds i would have done it if it wasn't for the spillage <laughs> and they said come into the cube come into the cubicle with me boy and i went what no 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 come on 
No, I don't think so. Come on, but don't worry about it. I'm not going to stop going to do anything dirty. I'm not. I'm not interested. And I go. All right, all right. So you say. So we stood in this tiny cube cubicle. You imagine Oliver Reed's a big fellow. And, yeah, you, know, you know, I'm not a big fella, but bloody hell, it's to stand in a little tiny men's cubicle in the toilets is, with the Oliver Reed isn't something you'd expect to do. There's not a lot of spare room. So he, he gets the little bag of dog hair out of his pocket and starts pushing it into his own hair, which is now grey and all messy and sort of, sort of, you know, just sort of how you imagine that after someone had just woken up, really. So... He's putting all this dog, lodging it into his own hair. So, and I go, Jesus, what on earth are you doing? He goes, you'll see, boy, you'll see. I have a plan. And I go, OK, OK. So we go through to lunch. So he always hung out in the, well, it's a bar, really. So he hung out in the, mo the, 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 not the posh bar, which is where the sort of the producer directors hang out and, f you know, that lot, the executives, but the kind of bar where the chippies hang out and the, you know the, the, that he used to have, like to hang out with working people. You know, that was his his tribe. That's what he really enjoyed. You know, and the chippies and the scene painters and the sparks and the prop people. That and, and he'd go in there and he, he he stood against the bar and he goes, "Everyone have a drink on Ollie like this." And they all went, "Hey!" And they won't go to the bar and they got a drink or whatever. And as he's chatting away, his, and I'm sitting out the way, I'm sitting nearly by the door on a kind of long couch thing against the wall, you know, bonquette, I think they call it. And he, um, as he's talking, he's flicking his head around a bit and, and these bits of hair start coming out onto his shoulders, you know. Someone goes up to him and says, oh, Mr. Reed, uh, I think the, the, the sort of hair sort of falling out a bit, a little bit there. He goes, what, what do you say? What, 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 what are you talking about? Oh, rubbish, go away. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Someone else comes up to him and says, look, this is this definitely... Because he's really flicking his head around now. It's all going all over his shoulders and things. And uh, someone says, yeah, you, you know, I think your hair's falling out, Oliver. He goes, what do you mean? My hair's falling out, let me stupid boy. And he, he pushes his fingers through his... Combs his fingers through his hair and pulls them up in the air and looks up at his... his all this grey hair between his fingers and just goes... Oh my God! My hair's falling out. I'll be bald. Like this, and it was like a, the whole place went silent, and and and, and people sort of running around. And oh God, no! Get the producer. Get direct. Get get Nick. Get everybody. You know, help me! It's like an unbelievable scene. And they've. So now Rick, uh, uh, Nick Rogue, the director, and one of the producer guys comes running in there, who's, uh, I, I won't say his name, but he was, he, he was a bit of a, he wasn't very nice to some of the staff, you know, some of the, he was always nice to the stars, and, you know, but some of the sort of lowlier people, he was quite sort of nasty with and sort of short, you know, and rude, and, and uh, uh, he um, he comes over and he gosh, and they both go. And Nick Rowe comes in, sits next to me, and goes, "What's going on?" I said, "Just sit with me and this something's it's a joke." He said, "Yes, I'm sure it's a joke." That's what he's like. And the uh, producer uh, went up to Oliver and said, "My God, I'm so sorry. This will be we'll sort this out. I'm just so sorry." And um, he went up to the makeup girl and said, the immortal lines, you'll never work again in this town, you stupid, stupid little girl like that. And the poor girl was in tears. And I mean, she'd done movies for some time, but she was fairly young, I think. I mean, and it was not a great thing. And the, the producer wasn't nice to her. And it was, it was all a bit unpleasant and weird. And, and then Oliver left it probably maybe two minutes, if that, and then... It, and then shouted out, it's all right, everybody, it's just a little jape. It's just doggy hair. My dog and my little terrier's malting, you see. And anyway, ha, ha, ha. And, and the producer comes up to him and says, oh, I'm so relieved. And he's like really red in the face and pissed off. And, and, and Oliver says, I think you better go and apologise to, to the girl. Don't you think? Yeah. And, and the producer has to go over there and humbly apologise and... He sort of walked out with his tail between his legs. And he sort of was less unpleasant to people after that. So that's an example of Oliver's incredibly complex machinations he'd go to, to, to sort of do good in a way. But wow, the way he went about it was unbelievable.